You know, Samuel Johnson once said that authors and lovers suffer the same infatuation from which only absinthe can set you... F no, no, wait, no, absinthe, sorry, absinthe, not, not, not absinthe. Yeah, absinthe can set you free. Anyhow, I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Books and Beer Hangout, where we explore the highways and byways of the indie publishing world. My name is Jeff Moriarty with ePublish Unum, and tonight we are going to be talking about Markdown as a tool to simplify the writing process. Our guest tonight is author and writing coach Patrick McLean. Patrick, please introduce yourself and tell us what you're drinking. Well, I'm Patrick, and tonight, uh, due to a dearth of beer in the house, it's all consumed, uh, I am drinking a uh, vodka and cranberry. Because you have a urinary tract infection. I'm sorry. Yes, I, I knew that joke was coming out. I was waiting, I was trying to set you up to make that joke. I know, I know. Sometimes we got to go with the obvious. Uh, I, I oh, should probably match. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, tonight I've got a, a classic. I know it's been done before by multiple people, but it will be done again because Dale's Pale Ale is a fantastic beer. That beer looks a little light. It's good. Oh, it's good. Oh, oh. Wonderful. And <laughs> fantastic. All right, so I am also running low on beer, so I had to crack open my cellar and get one of my Firestone Walker 16th anniversaries out, which is made of amazing awesomeness and not light at all. Hmm. Goody. All right, Patrick, so let's get right into this because I know you've got a lot to cover. Uh, Markdown, what is it and why do you love it so much? Well, I do have a fine example. Uh, there's uh, I, I found a fine post which is Markdown, a two-minute explanation. Unfortunately, the two-minute explanation of Markdown doesn't cover the bit before that. So um, about 10 years ago, this, this, this movement started to, uh, before I get to the two minutes, I need another two minutes. A movement started for writing in plain text. And it's, it's very interesting because uh, there, there are two separate things going on. If you're generating a document, you, if you're generating a manuscript, it's different than generating a layout. Now, all of the web is based on this principle, which is you have the content and then you have the way that you have the structure and then you have the way the structure is interpreted. Does it make sense? So, um, for example, if, if I have a, a, a word file, you know, if it's, if it's a, you know, 90, 1997 word file, if it's a doc file, if it's a docx file or say a word perfect file or a word star file, I actually have some of these. Um, they lose their portability if you want to. If you want to look at this, it used to be, especially, or depending on what kind of phone you have, if I want to open the doc file on my phone and edit it, I have problems. But text is always and everywhere good. It's the perfect way to keep notes. It's the perfect way to keep track of things. So, so Markdown kind of, is basically just straight, oh basic, God. bland text with just oh a little God. bit of embellishment? Yes. So the problem with that is, that text doesn't really have a structure. It's kind of a blob of stuff. So if, if I want to put a heading in there or I want to indicate what's a paragraph or I want to put a bullet pointed list in there, if I want to essentially write in text and convert it to HTML, which is important for, very reason, for various reasons, it's kind of difficult. So for a while there, your choice was you could, you know, you could write in Word or you could write in HTML or you know you could or you know whatever else you wanted to do but you were always wrestling with either the graphic or the code layer so markdown is deceptively simple but what it allows you to do is it allows you to type structure into a document as easily as typing an emoticon so for example um, if you are you want to type a uh, a chapter heading or you want to type the structure into the document i don't know whether i should share a screen with you here let's so here's, a draft. here's a draft. Here's the draft of something that I'm working with. Now, uh, for functional purposes, I need all these little bits to make this document, right? Like you're an author, you're writing a document, there's crap everywhere. What this does is I get to put this under a heading or put structure in here from, by, just by typing a uh, hash sign. And that, that makes this a heading. So I can 
Okay, Patrick, uh, a new feature of Google Hangouts is that it will automatically mute your microphone if it hears you typing. Uh -huh. you a keyboard that's louder that's than no some good. airplanes that's, are written on. That's no good. That was, that was made just for you because you have the loudest keyboard on the planet. I just want to make sure that when someone, when I'm typing, people know that I'm typing, say, in other counties. So um, you start to add these structures um, to the document, and uh, you can do it with, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this mute again. Hang on. It sounds like somebody periodically breaks into Patrick's office with an automatic weapon. And then I type that fast, yeah. Can you please you hear in now. the girl it's from Impanier or whatever it is during the silent interludes, Jeff? That would be great. Thanks. So um, what this does is it allows you to write very fluidly. And then when you, you take this and export it, let me, uh, let me uh, click off this screen share. You can export it in almost any format you want to. So PDF, doc, HTML, RTF, anything. But you, you keep it in a very simple form. Now, why would this be of use, you may ask? Well, Evo can answer that question because when I started talking to him about Markdown, the first thing he said was, yes, yes, yes. You said, it's HTML, wait a minute. Come on, you want, to, you want to feed me the line here? But an, but an EPUB file is just HTML. Yes. So the thing that I, the thing that I'm trying to work on is I don't need I don't want a layout program, right? What I want is an ebook development environment. I want to be able to write as fluidly as if I'm just typing to have a lot of speed and then have that thing be able to render to whatever format I need. So I've used markdown for small posts, small blobs of text. And I like it because it's clean. Um, it, you know, I don't have a lot of distractions. I don't have to worry about formatting or fonts or anything else. But where I struggle is if the doc gets too big. It's, then I have trouble organizing. Or you, like you had this entire list of all those chapters that you shared. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do you keep things organized when it gets that big? Because and one of the reasons flat files developed into word processors is because flat files don't scale very well. It's easy to lose track of all the information inside it. Hmm. That's interesting that you mentioned that because I actually think that that's a default of word processors. So I'm writing a bunch of stuff for Wasteland 2 and have been since uh, June. So we've got game design docs and we've got the, primarily what they're working in is word documents which is very strange because there are a number of encounter files written in individual Word docs. And what you can't do in individual Word docs is you can't search across the documents. Like if I, if I want to search across 300 Word docs, I can't do that. But I can do that across text files very easily. Um, so Scrivener actually, uh, if you look at the architecture that Scrivener works on, it's a, the, a Scrivener file is actually a sort of a hidden directory tree and it's a bunch of text files. So you can use Markdown working with Scrivener to specify all this stuff. Um, but uh, there's a couple of different tools that can help you do this. Um, uh, one, one way is just to work with a bunch of little text files. But for me, essentially what you need is you need a window that has, like I showed, a window that has over here, it has all the files, and then a window that has the, the main text. This is sort of the holy grail. Um, the best way to jump into working with this, and I find this invaluable is just as a creative person, is there's that thing called NV-Alt. It's notational velocity alt, and I can, I will put a link to that, I'm sure, in the show notes. And um, that is an editor? That is a... It's a no, it is a, it's a note application. Okay. It's only for Mac OS, but there, there are reasonable ports of it for every other... Um, operating system. It's a note-taking app and it's very, very fast because all it does is take plain text notes and then it, uh, it has a markdown preview that will preview it in rich text and allow you to copy it into HTML. So quite a number of blog posts and quite a number of stuff that I have starts off as this sort of structured text in this note application here. I will, uh, let, me, uh, let me show you this because there's some things about this that are, 
that are especially good. Um, it's very, very simple. So this is a search bar, right? So I can sort of scroll through my little notes here. And you'll see that, uh, let's see if some of them are, uh, there's just all kinds of notes. But if I t start to search for something, let's say I want to search for Evo. I have no node for Evo. How can this be? Yes, that is about Evo. It, I want to put it in here. Need a larger notepad. Just saying. <laughs> well, it, it'll scroll down quite a lot. Oh. So now I can uh, let's see. Let's see if it'll do this. Let's see. Uh, Insert obvious joke here. All right, I have to screen share the other window. So it pops out this little preview window, right? And why can't I see the preview window? Okay, it's not interesting. But then I can I can copy it in whatever format I want to out of that preview window. On top of which, there are several applications. Um, there's a standard Mac uh, command line application called TextUtil, and there's also a thing called Pandoc, which will take any document in any format and transfer it to any other format. So. Uh, for me, the distraction-free and uh, the portability of writing in Markdown really helps me a lot. And although it's not there yet, it's about this far away from you being able to write in this simple structured format and then have an ebook just come right out perfectly. So, you know, I like gadgets and toys. So I like with Scrivener playing around with all of the different options and fiddling about and, and, and messing with things, but I can sometimes get kind of wrapped up in that. Um, yes. You know, is, who is, who would you recommend in terms of a writer pick up Markdown? Who should start with it? Is it somebody who doesn't like fiddling with other, you know, toys like, like I do with Scrivener or is it really for anyone? Is it for people who are looking for more distraction-free writing? Who should pick this up? Well, the distraction-free writing thing is is mostly a um, it's mostly a function of the editor that you're using. So, so there is an excellent, especially for collaboration, there's an excellent thing called Draft. It's uh, draftin.com uh, that uses Markdown, but as a full screen thing, there's things like Write Room. There are any number of any number like Pages and Word will also do full screen now. What uh, what makes Markdown very good is if I write in Word and I want to take what I've written in Word and put it on the web, if I do any kind of print HTML or mess around with it, Word adds all this other crap. Like this is, Markdown is bomb proof. And if you, if you have your, your sort of publishing format figured out or if you're publishing to a blog, then it makes it, and this is, this is kind of a function of, of being a writer. Maybe it used to be that you wrote the text and that was just about it. Um, but now we're generating all kinds of content for all kinds of reasons. So streamlining the workflow for writing for the web or for an ebook format is the reason that Markdown is very interesting to me. And, and, and to me, I think it, it harkens back to the day that, uh, well, the three of us can remember, but we never did much with it, where a writer was alone with a typewriter or a writer was alone with a, a pad of paper and a pencil. And if you wanted something in extra point font or bold or something like that you didn't you didn't have those options that was something that was done later and now with the advent of the lovely Microsoft Word the, then you are tempted to go through and add all of that fancy stuff to it all the way around and this as you say this can kind of get in this gets you out of that it gets that stuff out of the way and makes you focus in on just writing get your thoughts down on paper and do and do it the right way so so that's all great but Patrick last question uh, about this one is you know I'm I'm not a developer I don't have a code editor there there is I can't mark down on my computer what do I do do I go buy a program what what is my how do I get started by using markdown and I want that stuff out of the way I think the, the simplest way to do it is to, is to go grab uh, NV alt or go to uh, drafts uh, draftin.com I'll post some links there's a bunch of great things that use this tool right now um, and, and it's not it, it really is on the level of typing an emoticon 
um, to give to give your document some structure. Great. And so we've gone from writing great books to smiley faces. I got it. So if you put like colon paren, does it say? Does it change that to he said happily? <laughs> no, God, no. <laughs> Although, if you put a frowny face, it does say it was a dark and stormy night. Uh, on that note, we are calling it done, people. Patrick, thank you very much for coming on the show and confusing hell of us out of all of us today. Oh, it's really confusing. Just check it out. It's called Markdown. Google it a little bit. It might really improve your workflow. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So all the links that Patrick talked about, you'll find those on the website over at booksandbeer.com. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of E Publish Unum. We help authors survive and thrive in a digital world. For more information, education, insight, and lots of other stuff, and the occasional beer, why well, you can check that out at epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moyardi, I am Evo Terra. Thanks for watching the show.